There are concept cars, and then there's the Mercedes C111 4. You see, this is the sort of machine that makes everything else look like it was built with garden tools. Born from a decade of experimentation, this was not merely a car, it was a statement, an engineering thesis written in molten aluminium and fiberglass, proving that Mercedes could do speed records just as easily as he did luxury limousines. And in 1979, he did exactly that, screaming around the Nardo test track in Italy at a ridiculous 403.978 km per hour. This was faster than any human had ever dared to drive in a closed circuit at the time. But to understand the C111-4, you need to go back 10 years to 1969, an era of moon landings and engineers who still smoked pipes while designing engines. The first C111 looked like something out of science fiction, all gullwing doors and bright orange paint, powered by a rotary wankel engine that sounded like a chainsaw. Mercedes built it to test new technologies, lightweight construction, aerodynamics and alternative propulsion systems, not to win races or sell cars. It was a rolling laboratory in a time when the company was obsessed with innovation rather than image. By the time the fourth version rolled out, the C111 had evolved from quirky prototype to full-blown record weapon. The Wankel engines were gone, replaced first by diesels for endurance testing, and finally in the C111-4 by a 4.8 litre petrol V8 that produced 500 horsepower. It was in every sense, Mercedes saying, right, enough experimenting, let's show everyone what happens when we actually try. Now, 500 horsepower might not sound like much today when supercars routinely produce into the thousands of horsepower. But this was 1979, a time when the Ferrari 512BB made just over 350, and the Porsche 911 Turbo was still terrifying drivers with 300. In this time, the C111 4 didn't just go fast, it obliterated the record books. That incredible 403 km per hour wasn't just a number, it represented the pinnacle of Mercedes's aerodynamic and mechanical wizardry. The car looked like a futuristic missile, long, low and dominated by two tall vertical stabilizers at the rear that wouldn't have looked out of place on a jet fighter. And these ferns weren't there for show. At such absurd speeds, the slightest twitch of instability could turn the car into a frisbee. So, the stabilizers kept the rear end planted, while the long tapering nose sliced through air with almost no resistance. Mercedes engineers spent years refining the shape in wind tunnels, and the result was astonishing. The C111-4 had a drag coefficient of just 0.183, so low that it practically cheated the laws of physics. For reference, that's still better than many modern hypercars. The body itself stretched over 6 meters long, with a width of just 1.7 meters. Under the skin sat a tubular steel space frame, incredibly rigid and light, supporting a mid-mounted 4.8 litre V8 engine, as I said before. Now, this wasn't a race bread unit or some exotic experimental power plant, it was based on Mercedes's M117, the same engine found in the 450 SLC but tuned within an inch of its life, breathing through mechanical fuel injection and running on high-octane racing petrol. It produced 500 horsepower and enough torque to spin the earth backward. That power was fed to the rear wheels through a 5-speed manual gearbox, which must have had insanely long gears. Now the driver, Hans Liebold, was effectively strapped into a guided missile with four tires. To achieve the record, he needed to hold the car flat out for extended laps around the Nardo Ball, a circular track with a banking so steep that you could drive hands-free if you dared. Every second at 400 km per hour was a lesson in bravery, physics and the value of German engineering precision. It is worth noting though that the C111-4 wasn't built for road use. There was no suspension compromise, no attempt at comfort and certainly no boot space for golf clubs. This was a tool designed for one purpose, to go faster than anyone else, and the lessons learned here would quietly influence their future. 
on everything from the production cars to the Le Mans prototypes in the decades that followed. And yet, for all of its speed and sophistication, the C111 IV was still recognizably part of the C111 family, that strange lineage of experimental Mercedes machines that began with the Wankel dream and ended with a world record. Each generation of C111 told a different story, the first about innovation, the second about endurance, the third about diesel efficiency, and the fourth about sheer, unrelenting speed. In an odd twist, the C111 IV also marked the end of an era. Shortly after setting the record, Mercedes shelved the program. There was no plans to race the car or put it into production. The automotive world was shifting toward efficiency, safety and emission controls. Not the sort of environment where 400 km per hour missiles made much sense. Instead, the lessons learned from the C111 went underground, finding the way in into the DNA of the future SL and the CLK GTR. Looking at it now, you can't help but be impressed by its audacity. 6 meters of silver, a V8 shaft in the middle and two great stabilizing fins sticking out the back like an F-16. It was as if Mercedes built the car purely to say, we can, therefore we will. And in doing so, they gave us a reminder that speed when done properly isn't about recklessness, it's about precision, balance and the relentless pursuit of perfection. But yeah, at the end of this video, please let me know what you guys thought of the video, what do you guys think of this car, and if you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Now if you guys did like this video, you'll most probably enjoy most of my other stuff, so just go through my channel, see if there's someone else to like, I'll check you guys in the next one. Cheers, eh?